Hello everyone, this is uh, Shadi Reis from Sky TV 2024 at uh, Long Beach. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Brian Mitchell, who was uh, one of the late breakout presenters at Sky right. Scientific Sessions. Brian, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. Congratulations number you. one for the trial. And uh, let's talk about the calorie trial right. background. Yeah, so uh, this study, I think it's really important because pre-procedural fasting affects everyone. Uh, from the patients, it directly impacts them, of course. It impacts providers. Everyone has to make that decision. And in fact, uh, impacts the healthcare system with, you know, with consequences in terms of efficiency, cost, sure. yeah. uh, planning. So, um, you know, with that in mind, we took a look um, at a traditional nothing to eat past midnight strategy versus a more liberal strategy uh, of fasting before cardiac catheterization uh, with a group of inpatients. Yeah. We stratified those people or randomized those people into a nothing to eat past midnight traditional fasting regimen versus a liberal unrestricted regimen. And those patients were allowed to eat right up until time of uh, transport to the cath lab, actually. Mm -hmm. um, when they got to the cath lab, they took a survey, uh, ranked their well-being from a score of zero, which means that the variable wasn't present, to five, which mean that means that present was uh, variables present in the most extreme form, and um, and we took a look at the safety events as well in these patients. Nice. So this is again people who are fasting completely MPO after midnight. Right. Uh, when you say liberal, uh, what is uh, do you have dictate what they eat or uh, uh, take whatever you want? That's a good question. Um, our our strategy here was to let them eat whatever they would like. So um, for the patients that um, were in this study, whatever diet their uh, you know, admitting team provided for them was just continued, no. but they could eat whatever amount they wanted, whatever they would like in general um, before they came down. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So let's go over the main findings or the protocol. Absolutely. So, you know, we did a pre uh, we did a pre survey uh, our pre procedural survey, uh, looking at their well being. Uh, and I mentioned the score from zero to five. Um, if we had a composite of hunger plus fatigue, that composite score was significantly better in patients in the non fasting regimen versus fasting. Also, the individual components of hunger, of nausea, and fatigue were also significantly better in that group. Although the the variable anxiety showed no difference between the two groups. Mm -hmm. There was a post-procedure satisfaction survey done the next day, and overall satisfaction was better in the non-fasting patients compared to the fasting patients. Um, and then, you know, I guess finally, we were underpowered to detect these rare events like aspiration, but in the two groups there was no difference in adverse events whatsoever. You know, um, with the main concern, aspiration, pneumonia. Exactly. We looked at aspiration, pneumonia, uh, aspiration, uh, nausea, uh, the need for any uh, urgent or emergent intubation during the procedure. And, um, and then finally, we looked at pre and post procedure glucose and creatinine function, and there was no difference in those as well. But, um, you know, we expected it to be underpowered. Uh, these um, from large surgical studies, uh, a lot of them retrospective, show that you know, the incidence of aspiration, even in undergoing anesthesia, are anywhere from one in 8,000 to one in 10,000. So we weren't expecting to, uh, to really find that necessarily. But I think this just goes to show um, that, again, these things are uncommon and this can be performed and be a relatively safe thing to do that'll absolutely make patients happier. Yeah, are these patients uh, inpatient or outpatient or mixed? Good question. Um, these patients were all inpatients, and we chose that strategy to um, to be able to control what they had, what they uh, were intaking. And the the idea being that we recruited our nursing staff to really help us ensure that that they did eat some amount. And that was one uh, man mandate that we had was we wanted our people in the liberal fasting or non-fasting group, I should say to eat at least a non-zero amount and drink a non-zero amount before they came to really get a full effect of, of, uh, of the strategy okay. too. And uh, in terms of presentation, were they stable ischemic disease or anstemi or STEMI? Question. So um, we said uh, all elective cases okay. and okay. then uh, urgent cases, but not emergent. So um, you know, any case where there was an occlusion MI and they were unstable, uh, uh, a STEMI patient, those weren't included. Um, we also didn't, uh, ex or I should say, we excluded patients that, per the ASA guidelines, are at higher, highest risk for, for aspiration. Also, hemodynamically unstable patients, patients that had planned mechanical circuitry support. We excluded those patients as well. Um, so, uh, really, just the elective and urgent yep. cases. But but that's interesting because sometimes we get STEMI patients who require mechanical support, long cases. Right. And maybe they just ate at the restaurant or at home, and we did exactly. the surgery, and nothing happened. So, exactly. So that cohort patient, I think, taken care of by not, not, in non-randomized fashion. 
right. but from the practice. Yeah. No, and, and that's sort of what prompted uh, us to, to look at this because exactly. there's a very large uh, study by Hamid um, and uh, uh, several other authors that looked at exactly what you're saying, uh, patients that came in with ACS, um, STEMI, things like this, uh, and it was in, the, I'm forgetting now, but somewhere in the 4,000 range, and there were zero aspiration events. So, yeah. um, it, to, your, to your point, those people don't fast either. Exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, again, uh, another reassurance, and right. I'm not sure when this is going to get into the guidelines and becoming a right. practice of care, but uh, congratulations for a great study. Thank you so much. Again, for our audience, this is the calorie study uh, from Dr. Mitchell. Thank you for watching us. This is Shadi Reyes from Sky 2024 in uh, Long Beach. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you so much.